Mr. Chairman. <coughs> um, I think to put the the earth a bit of a level, I have to come from the other part of the world to make a few comments. First of all, I'd like to say, uh, <coughs> at last, I have found somebody who has a faith like mine. And of all places, it has to be the civilized world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying this because um, the so-called third world, we are being civilized, as the saying goes. My belief has always been we have been brought back into nothing. That comes from my belief. I've always believed this. You don't have to read to be educated. Education is knowing how to live. That's my belief. That's my definition of education. And uh, <clears throat> I'm really moved to hear that in a civilized world, we have a person here who has what a human person is that he knows where he belongs, he knows his basic platform or where he belongs, and not lost in the industrialized world. All what he said is what's happening everywhere. And I must say, I have been a lonely voice in a forest, you may say, not in a desert, because we don't have desert in Barbara anyway, <laughs> <coughs> saying, why should we do things the same way, you know, that they are bringing here? <coughs> in fact, seven years ago, when I first joined the government, <coughs> and we we're getting ready for self-government, one high official, Australian, said to me, Alex, we leave you tomorrow, and you go bush. I said, good. <laughs> At least we'll find ourselves again. I said, what do you mean? You'll be killing one another. You'll be cannibals. I said, good, that's part of life. <laughs> At least we will be people. <laughs> I said, what you're trying to leave here is you're trying to leave us as machines. And that's, I think, that's what the whole world is all about. Everybody, as I said, uh, being educated, in my view, is knowing how to live. And our people, cannibal as they were, or having their tribal fights, like the rest of us, I know the history of England, <laughs> Europe, the whole world, the whole lot, we have we are all the same. That's why we are human. And humans behave the same way. We may be we differ in color and darker than you are because I have more sun. But um, <clears throat> this is the thing. And people go there, came to civilize us, to educate us. I've always contested that. <laughs> and I've been branded as a revolutionary. <laughs> Your former Foreign Minister, Lord Carrington, has always called me UDI man. Where he got that, that's beside the point. <laughs> but sir, I'm really, going back to what you said here, Mr. Seymour, that's a reality, that people are getting out of. Now we, he we read about natural food, natural birth, natural this, <laughs> as if it's something out of the moon. <laughs> but that's what human beings are. That's the basic thing that man was made to live in this world, using that. What we are becoming is we are becoming robots. We are becoming slaves to brain of a few, 
through the electronic age. I'm going to say this thing because I believe this forum is a, an open forum. We express ideas. <clears throat> but what he said, sir, is very true. In Papua New Guinea, we have a chance to avoid that. But a few of us are fighting very hard. But when you get modern technology, so-called experts going there to advise our government, I see we are going the same way. It's a sad, sad thing. And it, uh, it hurts where I'm concerned. So, as my colleague said there, what do we do? We have a lot of programs to try and stop that. And I'm probably here because I was, I was too loud mouth about the whole thing down there. <laughs> so they said, send it to England. I can wish that so that we can do our own thing. And meanwhile, Australians, as well as Englishmen, go there as experts and advise our people how to farm. Like Africa, we had our own life. We had our own farms. We, had, we knew how to treat the land. Our land is forest and volcanic, and you cannot use a plow to go deep. Because when you do that, we have tropical rains, it washes away the, the, the soil. But those people go, they saw, plow it, put manure, put something there, the rain comes. That's knowledge for you. Or time and time again, bridges. <clears throat> I was head of government for four years, provincial government. I would say to the engineer, for goodness sake, go to a village near that river and ask where the river has never changed course. And there build a bridge. Don't touch anything. Do you think they'll listen? I know better. I have a degree from Oxford or somewhere in America. I'm a civil engineer. Bulldozer driver, dig around the bank, then put a causeway. And the first rain, <laughs> down. So that's where you have a conflict of knowing what to do and not knowing how to live. I put it that way. I think <clears throat> it's not knowing what to do that's important in my view is knowing how to live at a given situation is the most important one it makes you a man and what you are a human being with this <clears throat> and that's what so-called civilization that's being brought to us is doing to our people I mean, I'm not saying everything is bad, but I'm talking on basics. You're destroying that basic thing. As a result, we have a lot of what they call dropouts. They turn them. We have people who are floating between the past and the future. They don't know where they belong. So if you go there and said, I go there, I said, well, come back to the village. They say, what's in the village? It's nothing for me. Because at the age of seven, a kid is taken out to school, mission school or government. He spends all day there, and at four, he goes home to eat at mom's. Next morning and weekend, they go have sports. So there is no contact with the family and therefore with the community. So by the time they're 16 and 17, they don't belong to any society. So our government in Papua New Guinea said, we have a chance to not to turn the clock back, but to progress in such a way that we don't lose all these basic things. As my colleague they said, a radio, a car, a motorbike, a bicycle appeals to people. And there's no way a man like me will stop them getting it. 
But when they fail to achieve the first means of getting those, that is being educated or being taught to achieve certain skills to get money, then you have problems. And going to the land, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier, where our people are farmed without using all these deep plowing tools, and therefore the land remained, it was protected for many years. They have also brought now weed killer. And as a head of provincial government, I tried to, to, be, to ban that. You think they listen? No. And what happened? It kills the grass, kills the worm underground, and brings other insects. So what, the ecology, the environment is changed. And they get other weeds, which are worse than the first one. It's like the uh, Bible, where the first devil is driven out, he goes out and gets seven. <laughs> And the second situation is worse than the first. So <clears throat> this is what's happening. So I thought I'll bring these few thoughts for the meeting here so that you see even in under the earth where we come from, this whole thing has also come to be. And we have the same problem. And we're trying to do what we can to avoid it, but for example, Christmas time, one of my colleagues who was in charge of uh, NBC, he was prepared to switch on television for the first time, uh, even to disobey the prime minister. The result was he was fired, so he, d he doesn't have a job. <laughs> but those are the sort of people they have the four, and I guess, or middle, and so life goes on. I can go on with that. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of things in this, and uh, but I like to say again, it's really something to hear, and a surprise really, to hear Mr. Seymour talk in such a way that he still can be a man, an original man, in a place where you, anybody is so bombarded with modern technology that you, you don't know anymore where, where you belong. So uh, I hope this meeting can make a little impact on the way people's attitude towards uh, life. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.